everyone. So just a disclaimer here. I'm not jumping on the bandwagon. I know this is a topic that everyone's trying to jump in on and trying to explain and reblast. My take is going to be a little bit different from what the community's on right now. Um, I have been speaking about this for a long time. You can look back at old videos, like back since the year 2004, I was even writing a book about this kind of thing. So this is not going to be me just jumping on the bandwagon. This is going to be me taking everything that I've already built up, already sort of understood from the past and sort of bringing it into a framework. Now, I never thought about turning this into a typology um, because turning it into typology will like quote unquote pervert the pervert the information. Um, um, but I see the benefits of turning it into a typology and I feel like if we are going to turn it into a typology, at least maybe we can sort of direct it and do it a bit more right. Now, I think the categories that we have today are are decent, good categories. Um, but I think that there's just a little bit of crosstalk. There's there's a, a few different layers going on, and we're taking one layer and saying this one this is one type. Whereas we'll get into it. But I think um, I really want to sort of straighten out these ideas, um, make sure they come across clear, so that we can actually build a real and good typology in the end with this. I mean, I, this does have potential. Um, just remember that it's it's a typology. It's forcing things into categories that they naturally don't like. It's choosing what the categories are, I guess. Okay, so let's start. So, what is the social hierarchy? What is the social hierarchy? Right. So, we all see ourselves on a hierarchy somewhere, right? If we don't, then then we're not paying attention. But we do at least subconsciously see ourselves on the hierarchy somewhere, right? Because if we if we don't, then we'll cross paths with people that are above us and we'll get shot down. So we have to eventually figure out where we are on the hierarchy, see ourselves, and we all see others. And that, because we all see others, that means others all see us on the hierarchy somewhere, right? And so there, that comes into a perceived hierarchy versus an actual hierarchy, right? All of this is just perceived. There's no real um, hierarchy. Um, um, but there are objective, like people are objectively more skilled at basketball or, or, uh, guessing things right or things like that. So there are actual real objective hierarchies. Someone is better at making, um, um, doing blacksmithing and making a weapon or something. Right. So there are that, but for the most part, um, what we're talking about when it's our perception of that hierarchy, not really the objective truth of it. So you look at these three uh, last presidents, Obama, Biden, and Trump, and I'm using them for a specific example because they're all kind of they're all kind of at the top of the the hierarchy in the United States, right? Like the if we're talking about the hierarchy, right? Um, and they all kind of have something different going on. So between how we see others, and so if we wanted to turn this part into a typology, we'll get to um, capability versus ambition, right? And so you have low ambition and high ambition. Um, I mean, just splitting it up. I'm sure there's like a whole range in between, right? But if we want to just split it up into either low or high and high capability or low capability, right? And then we can start forming some kind of typology around this, right? And so let's start fitting people in. So the first person we can fit in is Trump, right? Um, it's kind of an easy place to stick him. Although I do think he's more capable than most people give him credit for. I do think, but I mean, the overall consensus, just to stick to the overall consensus and how we're throwing people into these categories. So we're just going to sho shove them in the low capability because that's a consensus. That's where everyone thinks he is. But I actually think he does have a higher capability than most people give him credit for. And he's highly ambitious, right? That's not something we can really debate, right? So he fits in here. Um, Biden, we know he's low capability and low ambition. I think Biden's actually um, semi-capable. Um, it's just he's old. Um, and... Yeah, the, the, he does have a low ambition, right? Um, and then we have Obama, right? Now, I think Obama doesn't actually have as high a capability as most people give him credit for, but I'm going to stick him here anyways, because everybody across the board seems to think that he's got a high capability. And I think his ambition, it, yeah, his ambition isn't so high, right? He does have a kind of a lower ambition, which makes him seem more humble, which makes him seem more likable. So yeah, he fits into this uh, typology. Okay, so then who would fit here, right? Who would fit here? Well, I don't know about a president, but let's take uh, Conor McGregor, for example, right? So Conor McGregor is very capable. He's number one MMA fighter. 
even if someone comes and overtakes him at some point, he's still very capable, right? And he has a high ambition, right? And so this is kind of, so he's kind of really high on the hierarchy, <laughs> but um, but we'll get into why um, we might sort of be misseeing him right now. Um, and so this is kind of what this um, video is going to try to come and correct. Okay, so here we've got a great typology, but um, does this model really capture their hierarchy mechanics? What's missing, right? What would be missing from this mechanic, right? Why is Conan McGregor does not fit in with the rest of these? One of these things is not like the other, right? Um, so the first thing we have to get rid of is the word the. There is not a single social hierarchy. Um, we all sort of meet in some sort of idea of a social hierarchy, but there are you can split up the hierarchies and separate them. And that's what we're going to try to do now. So what are the different social hierarchies? So we could talk about politics. Now, again, I, I, I'm sure there's people of, of all types in politics, but in politics, you get into kind of the people who are going after the top, going after the leadership. Um, you get in the military. Again, in the military, there is a ranking structure. There is a hierarchy in the military. There is someone at the top of the, the military, but then you also have people like specialists in the military. You have people like... Um, I don't know, psychologists in the military. So you have all kinds of people in the military. So just like, don't don't say, oh, I'm in the military, so I'm part of this group. It's an anecdote, right? Same thing in politics. Oh, I'm working in politics. Well, what are you in politics, What, right? So just generally, these kind of areas will attract people who want to go up in ranks uh, in, in this hierarchy, right? You have the judicial, right? Which means you also have police officers and things like that who kind of want are going in the judicial. And then you have uh, things like the clergy, like this is just an example, but like you have a head atop of the clergy, you've got ranks going down, right? Um, so the commonality in all of these is power, right? Leadership and power, right? Police officers have power. Military people go up in ranks to get power, politics, clergy, right? Not everybody, remember, as well. So not everybody as well, you'll also have ambition, right? So, so even if you are in the right, in, in it for the leadership, in it for the power, in it to be in charge, even if you are in it for this sort of clustering of hierarchies, right? These are all different hierarchies, right? Each of these is a completely different hierarchy. And there's others that might fit into this category too. Um, you might have a lower ambition. You might not get to the top because of your, or you might even get to the top despite your low ambition, right? Like Biden. <laughs> So, and you might have different capability, but at least you're seeing yourself in this hierarchy somewhere. You're you're going to be on the hierarchy. You're going to fight for whatever position you think you should be in, in this hierarchy, right? That's kind of what's happening. So what other hierarchies are there? Well, let's look. Worlds, like this is just right from the internet. You've got wealth. Wealth is a hierarchy, right? Um, it's clear hierarchy. People are tracking it. People are aware of it, right? What else is in the the, the wealth hierarchy? Okay, you've got all kinds of different institutions that sort of support the, the financial systems, right? You have people showing off their wealth, right? Saying, hey, I'm on the hierarchy. Look, look where I'm at on the hierarchy. I've got bling, right? Um, it's not only wealth, it's resources, right? I've got here oil drilling, right? But I mean, like, even in biblical biblical Egypt, for example, the, the first pharaoh at the time um, stored up grain. And then when there was a famine... There were actually many pharaohs at the time, there were a lot of different um, states with each of them having their own pharaoh. The one who saved up and stored up all the grain was able to seize power everywhere because of the control of the resources, right? And so this is something that comes from as well as you see it in the animal kingdom. Uh, whoops, I jumped far too far forward. So yeah, you got all kinds of jobs around the financial uh, sector. And then you have you know, people flaunting their wealth, showing where they are in the hierarchy. You have uh, gold diggers, right? Who are looking for people on that hierarchy, right? And so this hierarchy is wealth and resources, right? So this is another clustering, another way to look at it. And you can already see that Trump, for example, is paying attention to this hierarchy. He's paying attention to the leader leadership hierarchy, and he's also paying attention to this hierarchy, right? Whereas Obama, Biden, Conor McGregor, they're not really looking at this kind of hierarchy, right? They're not really trying to fight or, or struggle here, right? So another social hierarchy we have are, okay, I mentioned it earlier, like you have a blacksmith, highly skilled blacksmith, right? And you, they can compete, right? They can compete in this hierarchy of creation. I'm making the better swords, you're making the less good swords, 
or I can teach you how to make better swords because I'm higher than you, right? And so there's a kind of a, a, a skill-based uh, hierarchy. Um, this this is actually a more objective hierarchy. Um, again, I guess they can all be objective in some way. You can say, okay, financially, these guys are at the top, but um, whatever, <laughs> not getting into that. Um, you know, the mechanics, every mechanic has a mechanic. Um, if you have a problem in your specific area of fixing things or you don't know this car you'll go to another mechanic who's an expert um and so there are better mechanics and they can charge more money and there's less good mechanics um stuff like that right you can fix your car faster things like this so there is kind of a clear hierarchy in in skill right the glass blowers and then you have uh classically also teachers um so teachers have a, a specific area of knowledge that they can impart on someone else and it's like if you wanted to rise in the hierarchy of knowledge in this specific area, um, you could struggle amongst your peers and try to get up, or you could go to the master. You can go to the master, the one at the top of the hierarchy, learn from them, and then you'll have an edge over all of your peers, right? And so so learning from a master has an advantage. And so what ends up happening is you go to the top, you, you're, you, when you, if you wanna take part in this hierarchy, if you wanna learn the skills, learn what they have, um, um, the hierarchy is there to help you establish your place, right? Um, you've got you have scientists, right? So scientists, you, there's a hierarchy of scientists. They talk, they debate, right? Um, classically, you have Newton versus Leibniz, right? Newton ended up taking um, the the position of, you know, because of um, Encyclopedia Mathematica and um, all of his work, he ended up. Even though Leibniz today, we sort of we're sort of seeing things from his angle and saying he wasn't wrong. He might actually have been. Um, just equivalent or even better in some areas than Newton. Newton sort of took the the hierarchy away from him at that time period, right? But you can you can tell there's a clear competition and there's a clear someone's above the other person um, in 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 science, right? Um, and of course we have Einstein, we all know. And in science you have the Nobel Prize, right? Um, in 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 this type of hierarchy there's a Nobel Prize, there's in biology, there's all kinds of Nobel prizes, um, and it's you're competing for it. And you're getting it as it's like a prize for being an expert, right? Um, you have people that are good at uh, doing whatever skill they have, uh, flips, um, gymnastics, um, chefs, right? Um, and then you have also warriors, um, people who can train you how to fight, right? These people aren't necessarily looking, right? Bruce Lee wasn't necessarily looking to, to be a leader. He wasn't necessarily looking for wealth, right? But he was looking to be a master, a master of his trade, right? Um, and the same thing, uh, this is from uh, a, a movie, Troy. So uh, th at least the Achilles in this movie, he wasn't in it to try to be the leader, right? He didn't want to try to be the leader of Greece or of Macedonia or whatever he was doing. He just wanted to fight the best warriors. He wanted to put his skill to the test. He wanted to prove himself the best in his field, in his narrow field, right? Um, and... At the end, you've got the guru on the hill. And so what's special about expertise is you go to them, right? You're the one going to them. You you seek them out. Um, they are at the top of their hierarchy in their small little field. And then if you ever need someone who's really good at what they do, you go and you find the best. You you go to the top of the mountain, right? And that's kind of this, uh, this hierarchy of expertise, right? Now, let's go. If you want to go back. And look at the other ones. Uh, you could say that there's expertise in the financial world. Sure, you could say that there's right. All of this stuff breaks down. Um, if you want to sort of find all the exceptions, that's why forcing them into these categories is just remembering that you're forcing these into categories. So here, there's a lot of different subcategories in within expertise, whereas within leadership, there's less, and within financial, there's there's a lot of, I guess, there's a lot of different areas in wealth but they're all going for the same thing. It's still at least one hierarchy. Here, there's many different hierarchies. So it's gonna, so clumping them all together as expertise is kind of a way to sort of, um, sort of make them into a typology, right? So, okay, what's the last kind of hierarchy? I have one more here, just to sort of go with uh, what everyone's trying to force them into today. So the, th those categories are generally good. I actually generally agree with the categories that are picked. It's just, let's make sure we're defining the categories correctly in order to, to not type people in the wrong category, right? And so here we have the Great Gatsby. Now the Great Gatsby, he was in an area of wealth, right? He, um, he was, 
he was in a wealthy sector, a wealthy hierarchy, but the hierarchy he was going up wasn't because he was the richest or the most wealthy. The hierarchy was going up was because he threw the best parties because he was the most social, right? Um, you always have a group of friends and it doesn't matter if one of them is rich, one of them could be the president of the United States. There's still the, the person within the, the, the social group who is the most liked, who is the most social, who is the most, right? He's, he's, he or, or she, sorry, is on a higher level of hierarchy within this realm of social, right? Um, you get, uh, this is from Mad Men, right? You get the, again, there's a struggle there for hierarchy. Um, I forget why I brought this, but there there is a social hierarchy also going on there in the whole sort of series. That's kind of what the series is exploring. Um, I haven't actually seen this movie. I just know this is also, this is also quite involved in social hierarchy, the popularity in schools. Um, uh, Oprah. Oprah is a great example because Oprah, you know, she's not going to be president. She's not going to be in the military or a police to have control, to have power. She's not looking for power, right? She's not looking for money, even though she got a lot really rich. She's not trying to be an expert in any particular field, but she's very social. And she's she is maybe at one of the top people on the connectiveness, on the socialness, everyone loves her, right? She's She has climbed her way on this hierarchy, right? Uh, Joe Rogan as well. Again, he's not, he doesn't have a specific skill that he's after. He doesn't, he's not going straight for power, right? Um, for leadership. He's not trying to be a leader. He's not, he's not um, going for wealth, although he's also doing just as well as Oprah, if not better today, right? He's making a lot of money, but that's not, that's not what his, that's not what his goal was. That's not, the game he's playing right so that's it's a it's a good lesson too to say okay just because you are somewhere on this totem pole doesn't mean that's the game you're playing right you might be at the very bottom of one totem pole but that's the game you're playing and you might be really high on another totem pole but you're not even aware of it you're not even playing that game you don't even care about that game right um oh this is a great one so we have kevin hart right this is a good example because um he's obviously as well not going for the power He's not trying to be a leader. He's not trying to impress anyone with any special skills. And he's not trying to be any financial, but he's well-loved. Everybody loves him. He is he is playing the social game very well. So he, he's pretty high on the social hierarchy, despite being short, despite being whatever he is, he's he's likable, right? And so, so here we have, it's a little bit of a misnomer calling it social hierarchies because a lot of them aren't social. But this is the social hierarchy. This is the social one, right? So that's that's one of them. So now we've got these four hierarchies. Um, and we have these ambition levels, okay? And so let's try to sort of see how they combine together, right? Now, like I said, just because you're competing or you're seeing yourself somewhere on one of these hierarchies doesn't mean that you're that you're capable there, and it doesn't mean that you're ambitious there, right? You could be interested in power and leadership, but very not capable and very not ambitious, right? And you would, but you would still, as a typology system, fit into this place, right? What what I think we're doing today is taking everyone that's high ambitious, highly ambitious, and throwing them just in this one category, right? Just like McGregor. So McGregor, when you look at him, he's not really looking for power or leadership. That's not what he's doing. Wealth, he doesn't care. Social, he doesn't care about the social aspect. He's going straight for expertise. He's just like the guy in Troy, Achilles, trying to show that he's the best fighter. He's going for expertise. And then at the end of the day, um, he'll be on his mountain. People will seek him out in order to learn from him and to, to, to compete in the realm that he was winning at, right? And so that's kind of that's kind of why I would say McGregor, McGregor might be typed wrong if you were to take um, this kind of framework, right? Uh, let's look at the others. Trump. So Trump, yes. Interest in power. Yes. Interest in wealth. Expertise, not really. Social, not really. You're fired, you're fired, you're fired, right? He doesn't really care. He's not really competing in the likability place, right? And so you see Trump has both of these, right? That's what Trump's going for. Um, Obama. Let's look at Obama. Is he interested in power and leadership? Well, he is in power. He is a leadership. Maybe he is, right? Um, he's He's not fighting too hard for it, right? But is he going for wealth? Not really. Expertise? Maybe a little bit. Social? Yes, he's going for social. And these two are supposed to be at odds, right? But but how, so how is Obama playing both of these worlds, right? So it's a good question to sort of try to think about. 
um, Biden. So Biden, yes, he might have been, he might be in the power leadership, right? It doesn't seem like he's, he wants a lot of, maybe, maybe he's friends, maybe he's looking for social, um, not wealth, not expertise, but he's also sort of skating the lines between these two places. Um, the, the thing is he's, he sees himself as low on, low on the, uh, totem pole and he's, and he's, uh, he is kind of low on the totem pole, right? Um, so it's really hard. That's the thing. It's really hard to type people who have a low ambition. Um, people who have high ambition, it's really obvious what they're going for. And you see, it was hard for me to talk about, okay, what is Obama really, where is he actually competing? I don't know. Where is Biden actually competing? I don't know. So it's hard to use that typology because we don't know where they're really trying to compete, right? Um, yeah, so it's easier to see if they're more ambitious, right? Whereas McGregor, we can see him very clearly. He's not trying to be a leader. He's trying to be the best. Trump, we can see him very clearly. He's trying to be a leader. He's trying to be wealthy, right? And so that's, you're sort of outing yourself by being more ambitious, right? Um, and again, this might, if you want to talk, call it a typology, well, maybe this aspect you're kind of born with, or it's kind of a type related thing. Um, it's kind of a character related thing. And you might actually have to do a lot of work to change. Whereas this low ambition versus high ambition is it's definitely something you could tap into. If your ambition is too low and you need more ambition, there are ways to get it. There are techniques. Um, if your ambition is too high, there's ways to be humble, right? There's ways to humble yourself. So um, changing where you're competing might be a little bit uh, more difficult because you've invested your whole life investing in this realm of competition, right? Um, yeah. So another thing, uh, I, I this is that I, I was talking, I saw it from before. So I wanted to just see sort of, does this sort of typology idea lend itself to what I was seeing before in the mating strategy? And so kind of. So you see these percentages don't add up to 100, right? What people were actually voting on are their top three, right? But what you see in their top three, um, top three women that are look, looking for a partnership with uh, men, what kind of qualities are they looking for? Sense of humor is number one. Sense of humor isn't power. It's not wealth. It's not expertise. Maybe it's expertise. Seinfeld kind of made it an expertise, but it's more a social thing, right? So you could kind of see that um, a lot of women are looking at the social hierarchy, right? That is definitely something they're in tune with. But wait a minute, also intelligence. Intelligence, we could try to also force it into one of these things. Well, maybe maybe it it, it lets them be higher uh, leadership and power, higher in wealth, better with expertise, social, maybe not as much, but you could at least see that a high intelligence gives you a higher chance of being higher on the hierarchy, at least a higher capability, right? Um, financial security. Okay. That's wealth, obviously being able to plan ahead. Uh, I don't know what that is. Maybe we can call it uh, uh, financial security as well. You can call it maybe leadership if you can plan ahead um, as well. Um, and career stability, that's just the same thing as financial security. Um, so you can see that that it is kind of a mating strategy as well, um, these sort of domains. Um, and so going higher on the social hierarchy increases your chances of getting a mate. And so it's evolutionarily favorable to um, to compete at least and get somewhere on the hierarchy, right? Now, so just to break it down, just to finish it off, um, there's two parts to the hierarchy. And I think it's important that we keep these two parts separate and not clump them together and combine them. Um, because that way we can type McGregor where actually belongs in expertise and not in power, right? Um, so there's the participation, which hierarchy are you participating in? And there's the rank, where are you on that hierarchy? Okay. And I guess that's it. Um, I hope this was informative. I hope this can help sort of sort some things out and yeah, have a good one, everybody.